I'm Anna. And I'm Fran. And you're listening to Murder Words. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the episode... Fran feels better. One, her voice is normal. It's back. It's back I'm to so normal. I'm so happy. <laughs> so, and we had a comment about how she said Cheryl last week, so... She'll never live that down. It, mm. okay, <laughs> so it's her West Virginia accent. It is not. <laughs> so I am covering today. I switched multiple times. Shocking. I know do. I always switch. The Powell family. So Josh Powell, and I know this one was super popular. There are many documentaries on this because the case is like so shocking in the system just really failed. In this story, so... That's not shocking. It's not shocking. That part's not shocking. And this was recent. I mean, this was... I mean, it's not like in the past couple years, but it's it's more recent. So, all right. I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, also, we have masks. Oh, really quick. We do. So, if anyone's interested in, in those, they are super cute. I just posted a picture of them on our Facebook and Instagram page. Oh, they did. They turned out so cute. I know. Fran surprised me with them, so. It's because we've been working so hard. We've been working so hard that we just decided to spoil ourselves. Well, Fran did, because I didn't know. Okay, so, yeah, I'm just going to jump right into it. So, the Powell family. Susan and Josh um, and their two children really um, are the core of the Powell family. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going to kind of go into... Um, Susan Cox Powell. So Susan grew up in a family. They were super religious. They were involved in the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints. She was said to be super friendly, outgoing, like one of those people who never met a stranger, like could just spark up a conversation with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, that's not me, by the way. That's definitely Fran. I'm awkward. Stop it. <laughs> So she, you know, sweet, pretty, um, she had three sisters. She was the third of four daughters. Her and her three sisters were super close. They loved to be outdoors and play sports and loved animals. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting that I decided to throw in here was growing up, her and her sisters had what was called the bird club. The bird club? Yes. One sister, it's reminding me of my sister because I feel like this is something we would do. Mm-hmm. One sister got a bird, and then Susan was like, I I want a bird. Mm -hmm. So that she got a bird, and then the birds mated, and then they ended up with like 30 like birds. Like 30 birds. Yeah, oh. and they called it the bird club. That's amazing. Are you going <laughs> to tell people what you did as a child? I can't. Oh, so <laughs> I'm saving that for when we cover Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> we had very similar childhoods. <laughs> In year 2000, um, Susan was 19, and she met... Josh Powell, who was 24 years old at the time. So Josh was also raised in, they were in the same religion. Um, so he was kind of raised in that as well. It was not as storybook as Susan's. Um, he had some issues in the family. Josh's parents got divorced shortly after him and his siblings were, were born. And apparently it was like drawn out for years. Like it was not a pretty, not a pretty divorce. Um, according to the Seattle Times, Stephen, who is Josh's dad, which we will talk about a lot, was a harsh disciplinarian who verbally pointedly attacked Josh. Oh. Yeah. So as a teen, um, you know, Josh had some, he attempted suicide. He just, it's from the sounds of it, he had trouble dealing with all of this like any of us would. Right. Because... Um, that's not a very good start. His dad is also a psycho and a manipulator. Oh, so okay. He's literally awful. So Josh is described as loud, egotistical. He didn't like when people disagreed with him, and he was a know-it-all. I know. Sorry. A few of those, no. too. So Absolutely um, not. People called him weird, like said, like, he's a weird dude, and he did weird shit all the time. Is that what he got mad about when people said he was wrong or disagreed with them? Like, Ooh. no, I'm not weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm not weird. <laughs> You're weird. He is just... He sounds awful. He honestly. is awful. He is seriously a giant pile of human garbage. Oh. So, him and Susan had an immediate bond over birds. 
The bird so, club. The bird club. She had the bird club. Josh had a parrot. So they, like, had that common, the like, with it. yeah. Okay. And so they started talking. Also, like, she was 19 and he was 24. So he was, like, older and mysterious and romantic. Mm-hmm. And little she weird. was, like, super, a <laughs> little weird, but maybe wasn't showing that yet. <laughs> and she was just super, super into it. It was, like, everyone's dream, you know, when you're 19 or mm-hmm. whatever. Obviously complete opposites, but opposites attract. So after eight months together, they decide to get married in April of 2001. After eight months? After eight months. They were quick with it. I feel like my husband and I were quick too. I'm not sure It was over a year and a half. It may have been two years. It was like Maybe it wasn't quick, actually. I made that up. I feel like that is completely made up. I feel like you've now... (laughs) You dated long, you've now been married. Yeah. Like, I'm... Maybe it was actually very normal, and I just made that up. You, you really did. <laughs> so... I think it's true. You're really... You're I'm just really right. getting into the story. <laughs> I think I'm in it. <laughs> they decided to save money. They wanted to save money, you know, normal. So, they decided to move in with Josh's dad, Stephen. I don't so, like how you say Stephen. I don't like Stephen. Okay. He is... He, he is all, this whole family. It's ex- terrible. Terrible. Okay. So they lived with Stephen for two years, and then finally they were able to buy their own house. Um, Stephen lives in Washington. They bought a house in Utah. Mm-hmm. They soon started a family. Susan was a stockbroker, and Josh was an IT person. So they were just, you know, they had two sons, Charlie and Brayden. And that gave her meaning, and like that—that that was like her purpose. She loved it. Right. Um, she sounds yeah, like a fair her, story. Two career-oriented positions in the house, and two beautiful baby boys. Yeah. So from the outside looking in, it looks perfect. Mm-hmm. Like there could be nothing wrong. I'm gonna kind of jump ahead. So I hope the way I tell this isn't like super confusing. I'm jumping straight into it. Just jump straight into it. Right into it. So on December seventh, two thousand nine. Josh and Susan Powell's children did not show up for daycare. So the daycare owner was apparently Susan's best friend. And she was immediately like, dude, something's wrong. Like, if she wasn't going to bring her kids, like, she would have called me, texted me, whatever, said, hey, they're going to be late or I'm not bringing them today. Like, they were best friends. So that would be like me just not showing up to you. Yeah. And she was very much like a scheduled person. Like, this was just not... Not like her at all. She tried calling Susan's work and no one answered the phone. So she called Josh's work and they said that he didn't show up. And so she was like, what is actually going on? So she decided to go to their their house. She walked up, pounded on the door. There was no answer. And she was like looking around. Apparently it was a snowstorm and there were no footprints in the snow. I'm liking this girl. Yeah. She, she just, just went serious. straight up to this house in the snowstorm. Was like, where's yeah. my friend? Where's my friend's family? Yeah. Investigator. Like there were no footprints. So then she went to, uh, apparently Susan had been asking about how to fix something on the furnace. So she thought they had carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh. So she called the police. Um, she called Josh's mom first oh, okay. and then she showed up and then they called the police cause they were like super concerned. The police show up and they get permission, uh, from Josh's mom and the best friend to break a window and go into the house. So when they go in there, the family wasn't there. They searched the family car was missing. So they start thinking things like maybe they just took like a day trip or something. Um, the, the daycare lady, the best friend said that Susan had just been posting on Facebook that Josh won a camera. So they thought maybe they were out like taking pictures or were doing something with the camera. The whole day off to take pictures. Well, and then they were like that, that just doesn't make sense because neither of them called into their jobs or mm-hmm. told anyone. So that, I mean, it's just not making sense. They also found Susan's purse inside of the house with her wallet and her keys. Uh-oh. Yeah. And they also found, like, a small key, and they weren't sure what that went to. Uh, but it, it like, comes back up. I, I feel like it does. No small keys are just laying around. Yeah, so just mysterious small key. If I find a small key just laying on the ground, I'm like, where does this treasure lead? <laughs> so, of course, this is, like, 
I mean, anyone would be freaked out mm-hmm. at this point. Like, the the car's gone, but her purse is here. Like, what's right. going on? So, of course, this is a missing persons case now. A detective is assigned. Um, from what I can tell, this happened pretty quickly. So, which I feel like is not normal. I feel like usually they they wait, like, I don't know. Uh, forever. Months. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the detective shows up to the house. He notices immediately that, like, something weird. There were two fans set up in the living room, blowing towards the carpet, and it had appeared that one of the couches had been cleaned. Oh. So. I don't like where this is going. Yeah. Super weird. They put out a statewide bulletin to be on the lookout for their vehicle, which was a light blue minivan. So, at this time, like, their church friends... Um, you know, they had a big church family. They were, like, mm-hmm. gathering at her house, like, just ready to take some action. Twelve hours after her disappearance. Bitch, I can't. What? 7 p.m. The light blue minivan comes driving up into the driveway. It was Josh. And what? And two kids. And two kids? And the, their two kids, Brayden and Charlie. Of course, the cops run out. Like, bro, like, where have you been? Do you not realize, like, what is happening right now? Like, the entire, you just are going to stroll up here, like, hey, The entire welcome. city is just looking for you guys. Yeah. And he said that around midnight the night before, he came up with the idea to take his son's winter camping. <laughs> so he had 12 hours, and that's I what he came up with? I cannot even say it with a straight face. He had 12 hours and that's what he came I up with. I decided to take my son's winter camping. But he was a weird dude and did weird shit. So some of his friends were like, I mean, he has done that. He's done that before. Just drug children out so, into the middle of a snowstorm. Yep. He was like, they wanted to. They, they want- told me that this little baby told me he wanted to go camping in the middle of a blizzard. Why wasn't he already in bed? So the cops were like, no, that is stupid. (laughs) And yeah, Josh made it sound like it was normal. They did it all the time. And then they were like, okay, so why haven't you answered the phone? Like we've been trying to call you for 12 hours. And he legit said he was trying to conserve battery because he didn't have a charger. But the cop who was talking to him saw a charger right next to Josh in the van. Oh, just sitting there in the he van. He does not think ahead. I was just, I couldn't even believe what I was, what I was <laughs> reading. He acted shocked when they told him Susan didn't. They were like, hey man, like Susan didn't show up to work. And he was like, that is not, like she is so responsible. That would never happen. Like something's wrong if she's not at work because that is very out of character for her. And so the cop was like, yeah, you're going to need to come down to the station so we can talk to you. During the same time, her friends were calling everyone trying to figure something out. They called one of Susan's friends, Giovanna. Huh? This is so pure. I couldn't even believe it. I don't know. Her name was like an Giovanna. angel. Giovanna. Giovanna. And she said she was with them the night before. They would get together once a month to knit. Stop. She has a bird club and a knitting club. Is she not the most oh. angelic? She really is. And she's a stockbroker, so she's got, like, some bad in her, too. Literally, uh, when I... And, like, just seeing Giovanna interview, like, she looks so pure and innocent. Just like someone who would have a knit club. A knit club. Just showing up. She said... I bet they're for, like... Like, newborn baby hats or probably, something. Probably. Probably for, like, the NICU. Yeah. They're yeah. probably, like, for that. I bet it was. <laughs> Too fun. <laughs> you know, looking to her next. <laughs> so, she said it was, like, super normal. Like, they were all hanging out. Josh was making a meal. They ate breakfast for lunch. Everything seemed super happy and normal. Like, she had no, like, concerns. At the police station... Josh was interviewed with his kids. He said the last time he saw Susan was the night before at midnight. The cop was like, okay, but it's a Sunday night. Like, you have work in the morning and you didn't show up. And he literally said, I forgot it was Sunday. (gasps) He's so bad at lying. I am just going to throw this out here. Fran and I are both ex-criminals. Yes. 
And from for us watching another human say the most stupid shit I've ever heard. Like, I, anyone... My dog Phoebe could have came up with a better excuse. <laughs> Phoebe came up with a way better. Excuse. I didn't know it was Sunday. I know, I'm sir. Like, I know in some kind of weird way it bothers me how sloppy they are. Like, like in some kind of weird way. And like, this is someone shouldn't. who is a know-it-all. Like yeah. you don't just all of a sudden. I forgot it was, I forgot Sunday. It was Sunday. That's probably how he sounded too. I forgot uh, it was Sunday. <laughs> I, he's weird. He's weird. And he didn't seem concerned at all. Like, zero percent. Like, he just kept saying, like, I forgot, I don't know, or just, like, would divert attention. Why did he just say, can I have an attorney, please? Literally, because he's stupid. That's He's exactly. a stupid idiot. I can't. He, like, they found a, they wanted to search his minivan, and he was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> They found a bunch of camping stuff. Like, it was all normal. Like, nothing suspicious was in that van. They wanted to talk to him again, so they asked him if he could come in the next day alone without his kids. When he came, And he did. When he came back in, they asked, do you think she's in danger? Like, what do you think her well-being is? And he said, I'm beginning to think it's not good. I'm sorry, let me do it in his I'm beginning to think it's not good. <laughs> oh, he's stopping. <laughs> it's so, so terrible. <laughs> the detective was like, so who should I look at, like, as a suspect? And he said he didn't know. It's shocking. That's, I don't know. He doesn't even know that it's Tuesday. He, he has no idea. I mean, he does, but just these excuses are <laughs> embarrassing. Then he gets angry, and the focus, like, jumps over to Mm -hmm. the broken window. What? Like, he said her best friend, the daycare owner, had a key to their house. Like, she just came over all the time. So why did she give the cops permission to break a window when she had a key? And so this is what he's focusing on now. Like, he's pissed over this window. So that's the whole thing. He's he, bringing it up. Is he trying to find, like, a loophole? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they did an illegal search or something like that? Probably. Yeah. He's mad because they didn't well, just open the door. Well, he did leave the charger out, so he has to come up with something He. <laughs> I mean, like, writing this down and doing the research, it was bad. But, like, now saying it out loud, I'm like, wow. He was a terrible criminal. Terrible criminal. Josh didn't know this, but at the same time that he was being questioned, they secretly got his kids and they were questioning them too. So now, how were they doing that without a parental? I guess because it's a missing persons. I don't know. They just had the kids in like a different room. Okay. Questioning them, like asking them. Like, well, so it, this is my fault. I brought this up because I just got done with one of my um, juvenile studies class. Like, just finished it, so um, that was my fault. Go ahead. Are they not allowed to be questioned without a parent? No, they don't have to be questioned without either an attorney or a parental figure. So a grandma. It was definitely just like a detective and the kids. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. Well, I'm going to let it pass this time. I'm, I'm going to override it okay, and say that's fine. it's totally This cool. is totally on me being a know-it-all, <laughs> just like him. <laughs> Because I just got done studying that class. Okay, go, con- no, on that it. makes sense. Continue. I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm not going to get into the of things. <laughs> so at this point, Charlie is almost five and Brayden is almost three. See? For- okay, go ahead. When they asked them, who did you go camping with? They said, mom and dad. It's like so chilling, dude. And when they said, who did you come home with? Charlie said, my dad, my mom stayed at the park. When the detective asked, where did she stay? Charlie said, she stayed where the crystals are. Is that not so chilling? Oh my God. So what were the crystals? They never found out. And I'm going to go into that. Like they tried, I mean, they searched a lot. Yeah. They had a lot of different searches. Um, They did go to the campground and search and came up with nothing. It was like a dead end. They break the news to Josh that they were talking to the kids and said, like, what they said. And he, like, had a pause. Almost like he was thinking, like, what am I, how am I going to respond to this? Mm-hmm. And he basically said, she did not go with us. The kids are lying. 
Good one, Josh. Yeah, just threw your kid under the bus. The detectives were super frustrated because they re- they didn't have anything to hold him on. Like they had no evidence, like no proof of anything, no evidence. Right. Josh wasn't asking like, "Where is she? How can I help? Like, what's going on?" Mm-hmm. Like he's just like, "Y'all broke my window." Yeah. For- like he literally does not care. They did, however, tell him he couldn't go home because they had a search warrant and they were in his house okay. at that time. But again, other than like a huge amount of like techie stuff, like a bunch of hard drives, a bunch of computer, like he was mm-hmm. an IT person, like he was into all that. Mm-hmm. They they didn't find anything. There there was like a small amount of blood droplets. It was said that it looked like someone sneezed, so that could be, like, anything. Like, right. they could probably find that here. Right. Um, so, it was really also a dead end. The evidence came back on the hard drives. Josh had encrypted them with strong passwords, and they couldn't get into them. Oh, okay. Now he's straight up like Garcia. Yes, on. Garcia's not thinking of. <laughs> so, that's Where exa- is she now? That Neither. was my first thought. So, and they couldn't, like get into them still to this day they've never gotten into them see now he's getting a little smarter with it so nine days after the disappearance of susan the cops were basically like you are a giant lack of effort and zero percent helpful so (laughs) you're actually harming the investigation so they went out and made a like announced to the media that Josh was a person of interest. Oh, I bet you he was not happy he about that. He was not happy. The only thing is they didn't have, like, a motive. Like, why would he do this? Like, mm-hmm. what is going on that caused this? Then, this stupid pile of sewage <laughs> literally packed his two kids up and moved to Washington in the middle of the night to live with his dad, Steve. Why is he always going to places in the middle of the night? He is... <laughs> He just left his job. Yeah, he didn't get to school and was like, hey. Did not care. The media was starting to pick the story up. And Susan's dad. Sorry if you guys can hear my coffee pot. Apparently it's turning off right now. I thought it was alarm. (laughs) So, yeah. So, her dad is, like, doing all kinds of. Like, he wants this story out there. He wants to find his daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, he's. Like, any dad would. He. Like, he thought maybe she's alive and she'll see this and, like, come back. Like, something's wrong. hmm This made Josh mad. He was so mad. He is... Like, he said that the media was putting her on a pedestal and they need to know the real story. What? About what happened. If he knows the real story, why are he saying it again? Oh, he did. He said... Oh, here it comes. He said... That her parents were extremely abusive and had really bad anger issues. He made it out to sound like she was some kind of rebel and fled because she was trying to escape her parents and that she was a bad wife. So after making Susan look like trying to ruin her reputation, of course, he's living with his dad, Stephen, and they start a website, SusanPowell.org, and they put up a theory about what they think happened different than the theory he just announced. Uh, At that time, there was another man missing from the same area. His name was Stephen Kosher or Kosher. I'm not sure. They put the idea out there that him and Susan ran away together. What? Yeah. Like literally they were like bringing up Brazil and all kinds of things. Brazil? Saying they ran away to Brazil together. I don't know. That would be super easy to track. Just. Okay, go ahead. There was zero evidence that they even knew each other. Like, they they investigated it. Okay, I thought that maybe there was something there. No, just nothing. No, just just nothing. There's, I know it's really shocking. But it just happened to, like, (laughs) be gone for a little bit. He was like, let's look up missing, other missing persons Mm. and say that they were together. Was he trying to find, like, a serial killer or something? Like, (sighs) Maybe you can figure. I, what, what he was, was trying to find anything that took the blame off of him. Okay. That was basically that. what he was doing. I just understand how he... And his dad is condoning it. How do you label that website as a non-profit? I wonder if he got donations through it. I can't handle you right now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, but probably. They probably got all kinds of money for it. 
he started out acting like Susan was like responsible and would never leave, would never miss her job. And now he's done a complete switch. Like now he's like, yeah, she ran off with another dude. Uh, pretty much like she's irresponsible. So Susan's family was fed up, obviously. And in 2010, they held a press conference. I mean, they were pissed, dude. They just let it all fly. Mm -hmm. So apparently it was said, like, Susan wasn't super open about this because she didn't want to upset her parents. So she didn't share too much. But she was a victim of domestic abuse oh. in that home with Josh. Um, yeah. And they, they, like, announced this in the press conference, like, talking about it. Um, they were, of course, super happy when they first got married. But friends and family think when they decided to have kids, things just started to change immediately. It was like once she got pregnant, he became like super crazy and rude. And I'm talking like controlled the money that she spent. They said that he would like pick something out that was on sale at a certain store and tell her this is the only one you can buy. Like this, this is on sale here. Like this is the only one you can buy. And gave her $10 a week allowance for groceries. What? Yes. She would call her friends and be like, my kids are hungry. Like, do you have food? He would go buy his own food and they were not allowed to touch it. What is wrong with this man? He is a psycho, dude. Giant pile. He is a pile of... I don't know what word I can think of right now. You've used all But the, whatever it is, he's a pile of it. <laughs> all the variations of garbage have been claimed tonight. So Susan's dad also said, like, he kind of saw this new side of Josh, too, when Susan went into labor for the first time. Her dad was like, hey, like, it's happening. Time to go. Like, yeah. let's go. And Josh was like, yeah, I'll be right there. And they left without him. And it took him, like, an hour and a half to finally show up to the hospital. And he brought his computer with him and was, like, working on the computer. And the dad was like, bro, get over here. Like, what are you... This is your first child coming get out. Get over here and help her. Like, what is going on? And, of course, that enraged him like it would anyone. Yeah, that's pretty enrageable. The weird part was, too, like, I couldn't figure this part out. He would spend thousands of dollars on weird shit because he's weird. Yeah. Like, electric cars computer equipment and thousands of pounds of wheat okay the first two weren't really that weird on a wheat but the wheat was weird okay thousands I can't... of pounds of wheat like what it is okay. weird though when literally she had to hide money from him during christmas because he wasn't buying gifts and he's out here like look at my electric car uh, full of wheat <laughs> put some wheat in this electric car <laughs> Drive it around. So what was the wheat for? I don't know. What was the I wheat for? I literally have no idea. Like, I think... That's going to bother me. Like, he... He is so weird. I, I don't... It's probably in the... We probably would know if we could get into the encrypted... Files. Yes. Files. He probably had, It might have been a fetish with weed. Who knows? I mean, it That happens. wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it happened. You know what I mean? That would not surprise me. On one occasion, like, they know that it got physical for sure. Oh. After the press release, tips about Josh started to flood in. Like, other people that were like, yeah, dude, he's a piece of shit. Okay. Like, some man called and said he remembers about a year before the, the incident of Susan, Josh told him the best way to dispose of a body would be to throw it down a vertical mine shaft. So the police start another massive search. Like, this was like a big one. Cadaver dogs horses they said like all kinds of stuff because it was out in like the desert yeah with mines so <gasps> they yeah so they're like searching and there's one mine that has gas so much gasoline poured into it they couldn't go down there because the fumes were so bad oh so they i mean it ended up being a dead end because no one could get down in there but okay. like suspicious that is suspicious very suspicious so they were no closer to finding her. Like, everyone's getting frustrated. At this point, it's been two years it's since she disappeared. Years. Her parents are literally in so much pain. Like, can you imagine? Like, not only is their child gone, but, like, their grandkids are in the custody of the man that they think is responsible. For her death. Yeah. Probably being treated terribly. Yeah. So there's really nothing, like, nothing that they can do. 
the families start to fight with each other, the yeah. parents. So I'm surprised it took them two years to get to that point. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been building up. Josh's dad, Steve, is an actual psycho. And then Susan's parents, um, it got so bad at one point that Josh filed a restraining order on Chuck, who is Susan's dad. So the cops kind of gave a little nudge. They were like, hey, let's um, let's throw an event and see if we can like get Josh to lose his shit. Pretty much. Oh, I yeah. like this. Yeah. So they come up with an event that was called a honkin' wave. Honkin' wave? So they were out there with signs and like t-shirts and like honk, like just kind of spreading awareness. Like her face was on it and all that. Yeah. Well, Steve, Josh's dad, shows up and he's like, um, my son, I don't know why I keep doing this voice, but this is what I feel Imagine. like. The way that they act, this is the voice I feel like they should have. Um, my son shops at this grocery store, so you're breaking the restraining order. What? Is legit. So Chuck, being the badass he is, pulled it out, pulled the restraining order out and said that he's allowed to shop wherever he wants as long as he doesn't approach Josh. Yeah. So they start arguing just back and forth, and then guess who shows up? Is it Josh? Josh. Oh, all dramatic. I can see that. Just so dry. Does an interview with the news, like all teary eyed, and said that he has been under attack by the Cox family. So he. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Okay, good. Right. And so after he's done being a baby. Steve, his dad, makes a final statement. He said that he has journals that were Susan's and they confirmed why she left. Uh, Basically saying to everyone, I have evidence at my house of why she left. I'm just hiding it because I'm a giant douche nugget. I just didn't feel like it. So (laughs) the cops and everyone were like, yeah, we're getting a search warrant. We're going to his house. We might need to. We might need those. While they were searching, they found the journals. There were a lot of journals. Okay. But they also found the mother load of weird. More than the wheat? This is where Josh gets it. The weirdness. It runs oh. in the family. Steve was also keeping his own journals. In them, he confesses. How madly in love he is with his daughter-in-law, Susan. Stop it. I swear. He wanted to marry her. He thought about her all the time. And he wrote in there that he masturbated while thinking about her. I actually just threw up in my mouth just saying that. Because I, too, have a father-in-law. And I would die if I had to be in any situation ever like that. What are you... What? What did he do with that information? So was Josh surprised, or was he just like, whatever, Oh, he man. knew about it the whole time. So I imagine. He just was like, whatever, man. Yeah, he her. just brushed it off, like yeah. normal. So they also found Susan's underwear. What? Tampons. And cotton balls that she had all used. And he would put them in Ziploc bags and date them. <laughs> So it wasn't like, I'm in love with her. It was like, I'm going to keep her tampons. Like, wait, can we recap real quick? What do you mean? So this, so Josh's dad has been keeping like trophies of his son's wife for years. Yes. He was in love with his son's wife. I mean, that's not in love. I'm sorry. I don't know. He was obsessed. He was something. He was obsessed. Go ahead. All right. I just wanted a quick recap that I heard that right. Go ahead. He was also a songwriter, and he wrote multiple songs about Susan and recorded them. Did Josh listen to these? Like, probably. He, like, he probably helped produce them. He probably did. You're right. He yeah. was on that computer during her labor. Just yeah. He was probably editing. like, Dad, this is a good. He was probably in the crowd singing every word with like a lighter holding yes. it up. Yeah. So. <laughs> He also followed Susan and would take pictures of her. Like, he was just straight up stalking her. He would, like, take the pictures and cut the head out and, like, put it on the bodies of other women and, like, tape it on there. 
I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Go ahead. Susan did tell some of her friends that after she moved out of her father-in-law's house, that it was because he was the most disgusting, evil person ever. She said she would be in the bathroom and he would be hiding with a camera trying to take pictures. I believe that. Uh, She told Josh that she wanted to leave and why. And Josh would always brush it off like it was no big deal. (laughs) I'm so awful. I'm dead. Their whole family is awful. The whole thing. During the search, they also found photographs of two little girls who lived next door. Like naked, on the toilet, changing, just like hanging out in their room. And, of course, that's a felony. And so they arrested Steve. Good. Yes. For child pornography and voyeurism. What? Voyeurism, like, that's when you, like, watch someone. Like, I think it happens in hotels a lot, or else it did. Or I just saw that on TV, and I think it happens a lot. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, like, where you have, like, a hole in the wall, and someone's watching you. Yeah, that's called, like, a voyeur. 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 Voyeurism. Voyeurism. And apparently it's a charge. charge. Yeah. (laughs) So, yes. And so because of this, Charlie and Brayden were removed from the home and finally went to live with Susan's parents. Okay, good. Police, like, they were so sure that Steve would break now that they had him. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he has no loyalty to his son. Yeah. They were like, he's here. Like, he's going to break. We'll offer him a deal. He'll break. Mm Mm-hmm. He did not. He just shut down and said nothing. His sentence was 30 months in prison. Stop it. I got more time. <laughs> I got more time. <laughs> like, 30 months was what he got for a child, por- for literally stalking two little girls that lived next door to him. And being super creepy with another guy's wife. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I got longer than I was. Yeah, I got longer. All than of too. us. We. Are in recovery and have drug charges. And yeah. all of our sentence, like, they told us we would have to spend longer than that. Yeah. I'm with a 10 flat. So yeah. that was fun. Fran didn't play <laughs> with her charges. She I, was a fancy criminal. <laughs> I was. I was white collar. <laughs> so while all this was going on, they went to Susan's place of employment to talk to them. And just kind of get to know, like, who she was more. And, like, try and find some more information. And they told detectives that she had a secret safe deposit box and guess what opened it the little key the little key the little key it led to some yes i oh i love so, little keys leave places yes so they went and opened it and they found a video in a letter so it was it basically it was like she was talking to them from her grave in the video She said, like, it starts out, she wanted to document her assets in case something happened to her and her children. That is so sad. Yeah. And she apparently went and spoke with a divorce lawyer, which was a huge deal because, like, in that religion, you, like, you don't get divorced unless it's, like, an emergency. Right. And she was being beaten, so she's probably terrified of them. Yeah. So, the divorce lawyer told her... To, to document everything in case, like, when they get a divorce, he tried to take everything or act like he didn't have anything. So, she was, right. like, going around her house saying, this is, you know, all the computers. This is the thousand pounds of wheat that was in the video. Stop it. I swear. So, she was going through. And the note literally said... If something happens to me, it might not be an accident. Yes. Like, I almost started crying. Because it was so sad. It's like she knew something was going to happen. After she, like, filmed that tape, apparently she confronted Josh and was like, look, if you don't get your shit together, like, it's like we're getting a divorce. Right. And that's, like, such a dangerous time for everyone. But especially for someone who's married to... Abuser. Yeah, Yeah, like the worst person ever. Mm -hmm. The note and the video were their biggest piece of circumstantial evidence. Um, And now they had their motive. Like, she was Mm -hmm. trying to get a divorce, so, and Josh, you know, was he wasn't going to let that happen. Right. They did get a lead on his computer. They didn't get through the encryption. Oh. No. They just searched his history, his browsing history. 
he was looking up a place called Topaz Mountain. I hope I said that right. Okay. So they started another search, like another huge one. When they were looking through their, the cadaver dogs found a hit. And like, oh. it looked like a shallow grave, like it was, and it was burned, like all over the top of it was burned. So they, they started to get, ex, not excited, but like hopeful that, this that way, they were going to get an answer. This would be some closure. Yes. They sent it off for DNA testing, like pieces of that. And the results were inconclusive. Uh-huh. Everyone was devastated. So like, once again, another dead end. Right. Then, out of nowhere, a detective, this story is so weird, I can't, a detective gets a random call. This dude is wanting a satellite image of a salvage yard where he said his car was towed, like, forever ago, like, years ago. He wanted to see if it was destroyed. The dude, Michael Powell, Josh's brother. Oh. So. What the? What yeah, of course they were like, okay. Mike, get in here. Like, we're trying to, we need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Like, what is, what are you even talking about? Turns out that he sold the car for scrap around the same time Susan vanished. And apparently the car was in good shape. Like, why would he want it destroyed? Right. They sent detectives out with another cadaver dog. The car was there. Like, they found it. It was still there. And the dogs indicated that a body had decomposed in the trunk of the car. They took the car, processed it to see if there was any evidence. They took, like, pieces of the carpet and all that for DNA. At the same time, they brought Michael in. They asked him where he was December 2009. He says he was with his father, Steve. Worst place you can be. Yeah, that's not a good alibi. (laughs) And then after he heard about Susan, he went to Utah to be with his brother for, like, support. Then they break the news to him, like, bro, your car has not been destroyed. We have it. And he is shocked and gets, like, super nervous. Like, cannot believe what's happening. And it's been years, He stops talking. Yeah, like, he's done. Like, he shuts down after that. The DNA came back. It was not Susan. It didn't match anyone in the system. So, we just don't know who decomposed in the back of that car. So. What? (laughs) Yeah. At this time, Josh is trying to regain custody of his kids, Charlie and Brayden. CPS, of course, was involved because there was child porn in the house that they were living in and voyeurism. So he is, like, putting... Like, Chuck and his wife, like, they started to look for information on Josh because... They don't want him to get them. Like, they're he, they're unsafe there. Right. Like, they're, like, they Absolutely. want to take him. So, and the court is leaning towards reunification. They always at this are. time. Yeah. So, Chuck turns into an investigator, pretty much. Ooh. And he Go went. Chuck. I'm loving yeah. Chuck. Dads, man. I know. I love dads. He went and got divorce records of Josh's parents. Um, and it was, like, thick. Like, this whole thing was thick. What he found was, like, super crazy. Everything was documented. There were issues of pornography in the house when Josh was a child. Oh. Physical abuse from Steve um, to Josh and to the mom. And Josh had apparently pulled a knife on his mother and killed his ger- his sister's gerbil. Like, what? he was violent, too. Like, he has a history there. Mm-hmm. They made copies of everything for their attorney, the judge, for... CPS, um, they were really trying to put a stop to getting them to go back to Josh. Like they were saying, like this goes really far back. Like it's not just recent. Like he is, he's a history. Something is happening. Like something's wrong with him. During the court hearing, though, Josh was he was able to speak. He talked about how he's never harmed his children. He wants what's best for him. Then a curveball was thrown in. It was said in court that Josh too has a porn problem. They found, like, I don't know the details, and I didn't look it up, but it was, like, cartoon porn, and it was, oh, like, okay. like, really crazy stuff happening in it. Okay. So the judge was like, no, dude, like, absolutely not. 
And of course that crushed his ego. Yes. Like someone like, like someone who thinks they know it all. Like he, in his mind, he, his kids were coming home with him that day. That's his property. And the judge. Yes, exactly. That is his his property. property. He owns them. So, and the judge was like, no dude. So the judge ordered him to have a psychosexual evaluation. Depending on the results, he might be able to get the boys back. Right. So that consists of a polygraph and they would ask him questions about his wife and his sexual desires. Okay. Um, even with the kids like not going with him, he was granted supervised visitations as long as a, like a social worker was there. Okay. Chuck was devastated. I mean, of course, like Susan's whole family is like, what's going on? Like Chuck said he felt like people would not tell Josh no. Like, they were super... Like, he was like, he's a bad person. Why is he getting the kids? Like, and... I mean, he was under active investigation for, for his, his missing wife, wife. And they were like, yeah, have a visitation. Have a good, have a good time. Mm. So, on February 5th, 2012... Oh, my God. What's going to happen? Super Bowl Sunday. This was the day of the first visitation. Okay. Yeah, it's it is a trigger warning. Josh was waiting for his boys outside. The, the boys got out of the car and ran like the social worker was with them. And they ran into the house in front of her. Mm-hmm. And Josh looked at the social worker, grinned, shut the door and locked it with her outside. Oh. So she's panicking. Like she's like, I'm supposed to be supervising these visits. Like what is actually going on right now? So she's like banging on the door. No one's, like, they're not answering. She hears Josh Josh say, Charlie, I have a big surprise for you. And then Brayden started screaming. So, I know, dude. The worker calls 911 and she explains what is happening. She says, I'm going to pull out of the driveway because I can smell gasoline now. Like, something is happening. And the 911 operator says okay we're gonna send someone and she says how long will it be and he said i don't know ma'am we have to respond to life-threatening situations first and she said this could be life-threatening like she's straight up having to argue with this guy like why it's two juveniles involved and they're two kids are you crying don't cry no it's really sad i don't know these kids are gonna get hurt don't cry you're gonna make me cry um so yeah she's like arguing um and all of a sudden there was an explosion. The whole house is in flames. She calls 911 back and first responders rush to the scene, but it's too dangerous to enter the house. Several hours went by before they could get into the house. And when they do, it's like worse than you can even imagine. It's destroyed. The boys, they died from smoke inhalation, but they had hatchet marks all over their skulls. So he used a hatchet to like knock them unconscious and then he spread gas all over the house over his children and then he sat on a can of castle a can of gasoline and lit it on fire. Yes. Why? Literal giant piece of shit. Like I was so hoping for a good outcome like he was like they escaped up the back. There are zero good outcomes in this oh story. My God. So, yeah, the system failed once again. The the operator, like, I'm not sure where he is, but he Hopefully should probably fired. not be working there anymore. They quickly found out that Josh had been planning this for days. He went and drained his bank accounts. He called his sister and told her, like, how to take care of things he was leaving behind He gave away all the toys for his children and, of course, went and bought all the gasoline. 20 minutes before setting his house on fire, he left a voicemail for his family. He said goodbye and that he couldn't live any longer without his sons. So, I mean, everyone thinks, like, the theory is that, like, those were the two witnesses. Right. And they were getting older and getting close with, like, their grandparents and he was afraid that they were pretty much going to put him away. Right. And going to like tell the truth. Josh is always one. He was like the whole time, one step ahead of the police, like the whole time, 100% this story. So now with him gone, they go back to Michael, his brother. Right. And they're like, we still want to know where Susan is. 
-hmm. Like, what is going, what is happening right now? Like, he, like, what is, just help us. And right when they start questioning him, they get a call. I mean, not at the same time he's oh. in the room, but like when they start oh, to come down like, on him hard again, they get a call that a man jumped from a building to his death. It was Josh's brother, Michael. What? Yeah. So, of course, they think, and it makes me think, he also knew about it. Mm -hmm. And he selfishly, all of the, instead of just being like, this is what I did or this what is what happened, mm -hmm. they're all just killing themselves and everyone else. Steve, are you sad? Don't be sad. I'm not sad. Are you Go crying? Ahead. No, Don't cry. Fine. Are you I'm embarrassed because I'm saying you're crying on well, the Well, slightly, but <laughs> mostly. Mostly I'm just like, I'm, yeah. I'm just annoyed. How this this is like me. a tough one. Um, Steve and Powell, he never gave police any information. Ever. Even after his sons were dead? He never, never like, dug in there Not once. So he served out his sentence. And, and continued doing it again. He, well, he passed away. Yeah, he passed away a year after he got out of prison. Susan's body has still never been found. Josh has other siblings that are living. Um, the youngest, Alina, is super defensive of her family. She does not think that her brother or her dad were involved in any way. She says, quote, the act of somebody... Oh, the murder-suicide was the act of somebody who has been so damaged by the lack of due process, so harassed and abused, and lied that he reached a point of, I don't know, but he did this because he, I don't know, again, that runs in the family, oh I don't gosh. know. Um, he did this because he was protecting his sons from the pain. What? Bitch. He, stop. Me he hit them with hatchets over and over again. He was just in so much pain. He Every was protecting them. Like, how does a person do that? Like, she is really... obviously terrible, too. This whole family is terrible. Like, if you gave a crap about your kid, you would, like, make it a much easier death, you would think? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, drug or them. Or just, like, like whatever not you do. kill them. Or not, okay, that's just probably... kill your Just kill yourself. That's, that sounds that's, mean. No. You guys know what I'm saying. Like, he needs to stop. Jennifer... The oldest of the Powell children, she talks about how her father would watch porn with her present when she was 11 years old. Ugh. They became estranged and because he's the worst. Yeah. And then she became close with Susan, who would tell her about all the shit he was doing to her, too. And she was like, yeah, dude, he did it to me. Then, because she's a bad bitch, she wore a wire on her brother and dad confronting them about the disappearance, trying to get them... To say something about that Susan. would incriminate them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John Powell. This was so sad. Another brother of Josh's was he was had a diagnosis of bipolar and schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and it was said that like when all the videos and stuff came out in court about Steve, um, like of the little girls and of Susan, Steve tried to blame that on him, and like Aww. talked about his mental problems and said that it could have been him that took the videos. Oh. And then kicked him out. And he was apparently wandering around the streets until Jennifer, being an angel, helped him find housing. So. I just don't feel like this family has as much loyalty as they're putting out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, just, so they said at the end, they don't, they ended up thinking that Steve actually did not have any involvement. Really? So they think that he is just, um... Another twist a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. It the just runs case, the family. Yeah. I mean, he has, he's a huge sex addict, obviously. Yeah. Um, so the case is still considered open, but it is cold now. They do investigate all leads that come in, and Susan's dad has not given up to this day. Oh. So. Chuck. I know. Chuck. That was so sad. I know. I'm sorry. That was a lot more sad, like telling it. Than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah, like when I was saying it out loud, it was like heartbreaking. It really was. I'm still so. not convinced all Stevens that. I hate him. I know. So much. I know. He's terrible. 
so I just, much. I don't know. I don't understand how they can clear him. Maybe they got something he, else. But like, I don't know if he's like fully. Cl I mean, maybe they just. Yeah, it was said in the end. Like they did not think he had anything to do involvement with it. in I, the murder. Maybe, but murder. I think he definitely like helped in some kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. Because if not, why wouldn't he just say like what his? You know what I mean? Like his grandchildren were killed. Yeah. Like, and he's still trying to protect his... He did you know not what I mean? care. He did not care. That was sad. Yeah, dude, that was really sad. I so know. They still don't know where her body is? No. And it's, it is considered cold, but they haven't closed it. Mm-hmm. So. She is presumed to be dead, obviously, so. Yeah, he's just so selfish that he literally would rather kill himself. He's a, like a family annihilator. Yeah. Killing his wife and then his children. He does fit the stereotype for it. Yeah. Um, so. I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can think of is he didn't want to face his own jail sentence. Yeah. But he still wanted to own his own children. Like, he still owned his children, so he took it them was like, with him. It was like, yeah, his children, Charlie, Brayden, and Susan were his mm -hmm. and he had the right like in his mind he was god he had the right to take them out of this world right that's so sad so it's real dark in here now i'm like I depressed know. i know the lighting's not the same now <laughs> <laughs> so okay well we're probably just going to be in self-pity for the rest of the day so yeah. i hope you guys enjoyed that story and it wasn't too sad it was so sad. It was so sad. I know. So Fran, um, her next, her story next week might be a two-parter. So you guys just get ready. Let us know. Um, send us an email at murderwordspodcast at gmail.com. Um, uh, like us on Facebook. There you go. And Instagram. And do we have anything else? YouTube. YouTube, we do that too. Yeah. So, also, um, we have a new European listener. We do. Finland. Ooh. Hello, Finland. Hi, Finland. <laughs> so, we get way too excited about that. We pay attention to you, Finland. We are. We see you. We see what's happening. <laughs> okay. All right. We love you guys. Talk to you next week. Bye.